Welcome to the Adobe Document Cloud eSign Services website. This is the website that would be hosted for all users to go to to create electronic documents uh, for routing for signature. So I can just log in with the account that my administrator has created for me and sent. This is the dashboard for the Adobe Document eSign Services. Uh, it shows you activity and dashboards for what you've been processing, how long your documents are taking to process, how many are completed, how many are outbound. So you get some actual productivity numbers right off the bat as you start uti utilizing the product. Uh, it also gives you status, documents that are waiting for you to sign, but of course you also get email notifications. And you get recent events, so documents that you've sent out, you can see what the holdup is and uh, where something is in the workflow, and you can go in and edit the workflow and change it over on this side as well. Uh, but basically, 9 out of 10 times, uh, the user will usually start here and say, get a document signed. From that screen, this, this simple screen is a screen that's used for sending out all of the outbound documents for signature, and you can configure all of the settings on this simple page. And this is the page that we'll be using today as we go through the presentation. So the first thing is to pick some people that we're going to use for our demo. So we're going to use our Peter Scorpentino account here. That's our external user to the organization. And then we're going to pick uh, somebody. I'm just for this sample, I'm just going to use one person. I'm going to sit there and say that I'm going to send it to the outbound person first because I'm going to send them a privacy practices notification for signature. And, and then when they sign it, I want to get it back and sign it. And then all parties will get the dual signed uh, copy sent to them electronically. So basically, I just have the one email address, the order entered. So Carlson first, me last. If I had multiple email addresses, I can change the order in which that they're in there for multiple signatures. I'll give it a sample uh, a name here. Uh, so I can have a message in here. And then all I need to do is I can upload the document. Uh, a document library, if I have templates created for workflows, you know, documents, normal documents that I've set up for signatures that I send out, such as like this privacy notification, uh, they can be uploaded into a shared document repository for the whole organization, and people can just pull out our standard forms for signature out of the document library. Uh, if you're linking in with Google, uh, like we do, you can actually pull your documents right out of Google Drive. Uh, and otherwise you can just upload. What you're available, so you click on upload. I'm going to just grab the document that I have. So in this case I'm just going to pick the privacy notification PDF. It was just something that I printed off of our website. It's our standard privacy practices notification and that automatically uploads that. Now I can upload anything, so any document, form, I mean I can take a form that and scan it in and send it as a PDF and put signature fields on it. Um, so you know from something that's not electronic to something that can be signed electronically. I can put a PDF file up, I can put a Word document in, an Excel document in, a JPEG picture, any and all of these documents will be converted on the fly as they're uploaded into PDF file format for electronic signature. So creating a forms is kind of a non-issue. You can create the form in anything that you want or anything that you have or anything that you can scan. So that's the simple part. Okay, and then the next part is I want to sit there and I want to preview the document that I uploaded and I'm going to actually place the signature fields on them and I'm going to tell it specifically, you know, who is going to sign what fields. So I've got everything that I need here. These options over here were discussed as we go forward in the advanced features, but this is a basic setup. Hit next. So here's my privacy practices document as a PDF file. And then these are the, the fields and things that I can have up here. The signature fields are the ones that are most often used. We'll show some of the other ones and some of the advanced things as we go. But I'll go all the way down to the bottom of the document. And then I basically will take this signature. I like this signature block. I'll show you this one because it captures the signature of the user plus their email address. 
Now I right click on it and I edit it and it says who is going to sign this block. So this block is going to be signed by the Carlson user, so the Peter Scorpentino person. And then the second signature, remember because I'm having two signatures on this document, I can have I believe up to like 15 signatures. So if you really have a large uh, process that you need to go through for approvals, that can be done and automated. So I'll take the second signature block and I'm going to place that over here. And then I edit that one and I say that that one is going to be signed by myself. Save it. So basically that is all I need. I just drop a signature field anywhere on any form that's been converted into a PDF. It's just that simple. And I hit send and out she goes. Now here is the what the user, the Peter Scorpentino, is going to see. He's going to get this in the form of an email. And I can also, which is pretty slick right here, I can create a reminder. So I can sit there and create a weekly reminder for this particular person if they don't sign the document. So I can nag them. I can be proactive. So I can create the reminder. That way the system will automatically send another email out you know, within a week if the person hasn't signed it. So I can push them along. Now switching hats. I'm coming in as Peter Scorpentino. This is what the Peter Scorpentino Carlson CSX21 user in their home Gmail account sees. So here it is. It says Peter Mott has sent you this document to sign. It shows a little preview window of it and I click here to sign it. Notice I'm doing this in a web browser. No special software. No Adobe Acrobat required. Nothing on the client. You know, just a standard modern web browser. Looks very much like a paper document. I have the little uh, you know, marker here to start so I can read the document, go through it, and then start. We'll start the signing process basically taking me to the first field. So here's my first field where I can sign and I can draw my signature if I want and if I do that then it'll save it or I can simply type it in. Or actually who am I? I am Peter Scorpentino and apply the signature to the document. And notice I cannot sign in this other block over here because this block has not been assigned to me. This is assigned by uh, Peter Mott to sign that document. So I, I can't really mess up. It's basically spoon-fed exactly what I need to do. Click to sign the document. At this point I can download a copy but I really don't need to because I will get an email copy and when all parties have signed all of us will all get the final signed document. Okay so Peter Scorpentino is done for the moment. I'm going to slide him back off the screen. I'm going to go into email and basically I'm seeing a lot of emails here so I'm seeing that you know the document went out for signature to the uh, Peter Scorpentino Carlson CSX 21 it's now come back and it's now ready for me to sign so then I open it Peter Mott opens it same thing no plugins no special software no Adobe Acrobat needed just a modern browser I click start notice his signature is here date and time stamped and then I just click on here and because I have signed documents previously it remembers my signature block I apply it click to sign alright and this has been successfully signed this agreement is completed again I can download a copy but again I really don't have to because if I go back to email and I open up the final document here it is. So here is the uh, document between Peter Scorpentino and Peter Mott is signed and filed. Filed meaning it's electronically stored in the Adobe Cloud Services you know, for the company. Uh, and everybody has now been given a PDF copy. So Peter Scorpentino has a copy, Peter Mott has a copy, anybody that was involved in the signature process has a copy. But here's an interesting thing about it too, as we showed in the demo. Here is our actual document as a PDF that I'm viewing in a viewer. Um, the document is locked, it cannot be modified. And when I go all the way down, here's the two signatures. And then what's interesting is that the uh, embedded to the PDF as the last page is the summary document which shows unique transactional ID that how this system has been created and stored so there's a unique serial number transaction ID associated with every single document that's created and routed for signature. 
that links back to Adobe to verify that the document has not been tampered with and takes it, you know, and verifies the document. But what's really interesting down here is it shows the whole history of the signature from the time that it was created to the time that it was sent out, from the time that it was looked at, from the time that it was signed. So all of the information, all of that is in there. Notice it even captures the IP address of the computer that actually signed it. You know, so again, using uh, mapping technology and things like that, I can actually kind of, I can see the internet service provider, I can see the location uh, where the actual document was signed. So that's, uh, it tracks all of that, that's all embedded in the document forever and ever. Uh, so you can take this PDF file to any d electronic document management system, email system, medical record system, you know, recipient rights, investigative system, you now have a completely signed, self-sealed, you know, document uh, for, for whatever use you want. And that concludes that first demo.